Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck, and a very warm welcome to Friday Fretworks. And this week, we're taking a look at the loudest guitar amp in the world. Well, probably. <laughs> I've no doubt that the guitar sound that you've just heard in that introduction clip is probably in the ballpark of what you would expect to hear when talking about a loud valve guitar amp. Singing, searing, squishy, overdriven sustain that just begs you to put your foot on the monitor, turn on the wind machine, and play that long-held note from the middle of Parisian walkways. <laughs> And thus it may surprise you to learn that all of the overdrive or distortion that you've just heard in that clip actually came from some pedals, namely the Thorpe FX Peacekeeper and a vintage fuzz face of mine stacked together, and that the true sound of undoubtedly the loudest guitar amp that I've ever played in my life, running at a level which genuinely means that you will probably not be able to stay in the same room as it for any amount of time, actually sounds a little bit like this. <laughs> I'm going to guess that that probably seemed a little underwhelming. After all, there's no context for what you're hearing, save for a relatively clean, slightly on the edge of breakup guitar amp. I guess the only telltale sign that you're listening to something slightly out of the ordinary is that compression that you can hear when I really dig in at the start of those open chords. But aside from that, I guess you're just going to have to take my word for the fact that when I say if that weren't running through the Universal Audio Oxbox and those exact levels were running through a speaker cabinet, when I did that earlier in the day, is the most visceral, bone-shakingly, ludicrously loud sound that I have ever heard in my life. And genuinely, as I said earlier, would be of detriment to your health and your hearing if you stayed in the same room for any length of time. So what is it and why is it so bloody loud? And what you're hearing there is a very early 1970s Sims Watts AP100 that's currently for sale here in the UK at ATB Guitars. I'll put the link in the description box. Now, Sims Watts was formed in 1969 on the Ealing Road in London by David Sims and Richard Watts. And like most fledgling amplification brands, wanted to cater for the amplification needs of everyone in the band. And thus, the AP100 was born. Much like my Laney clip that I did a video profiling last year, internally uses massive partridge transformers, and the valves run at an incredible plate voltage of 600 volts, not dissimilar from the high watts and sound cities of the day, which of course were much more famous. But the reason for this incredible voltage is to gain as much clean headroom from the amp as physically possible. But what is clean headroom? Headroom, in a nutshell, is how hard or how far you can push an amplifier before it starts to break up or distort. Now it's worth remembering that there's actually only 7 decibels difference between a 20 watt guitar amp and a 100 watt guitar amp, which in a real world scenario you're going to perceive as about being twice as loud, not 5 times as loud as the figures would suggest. Where the two differ, however, is headroom. With a 20 watt guitar amp, you're going to hit the headroom very quickly, at least comparatively, meaning that the power section is going to start to contribute to the amp's tonality in terms of distortion, sag, or compression. Of course, with a 100 watt guitar amp, you have five times as much headroom. Now, to simplify this even further, a 50 watt guitar amp and a 100 watt guitar amp will sound pretty much identical in terms of their output. 
But of course, with a hand rock guitar amp, there is twice as much headroom. But why would you ever need such an insane level of power? Now, in the case of this Sims Watts AP100, the clue is very much in the name. AP, of course, standing for all purpose. Now, it's important to remember that in 1969, when these amplifiers were introduced, it had only been four or so years since the Beatles made history playing Shea Stadium, where their main form of amplification was to be running through the inbuilt tannoy speaker system in the ground. Fast forward four years and not a great deal had changed. PA systems were very much in their infancy and odds on if you went to a show, the main source of the sound you would be hearing was from the guitar amps or the amplifiers on stage themselves. And thus, an amplifier that could cleanly and efficiently amplify anything that you threw at it, guitar, bass, organ, doesn't really matter what, would be absolutely invaluable in a live scenario. There's this great photo of the Who's John Entwistle endorsing Sims Watts in the early 70s, as well as this brilliant photo of Mick Ronson on stage with David Bowie, not only running his guitar through the Sims Watts, but reportedly running David Bowie's acoustic through it as well. Again, just proving that the Sims Watts had the capacity to cleanly and efficiently amplify anything that you threw at it, very much in a similar manner to a PA system. Of course, then, with a relatively low peak value instrument like a guitar, all this means is that you have near an infinite amount of clean head Room, meaning the transients when you dig in are absolutely massive. Honestly, I can say from experience that being in the room with this guitar amp at full bore is like nothing I've ever experienced. The transients are absolutely brutal and a little bit painful, if I'm truthfully honest. However, as musical trends evolved and distortion, instead of being something that was to be avoided at all costs, was to become something that was actively chased, so did amplification design. And of course, brands like Marshall would implement features that would allow you to try and achieve such gain levels at a more palatable volume with the introduction of, of course, the master volume. Now for this next clip, I'm going to be running the Sims Watts into a Zilla 1x12 speaker cabinet equipped with an EV12L and then mic'd with a single Shaw SM57. I'm going to be using my Greco Les Paul for guitar. Then for comparison, I'm going to be using an early non-master volume Marshall JMP. Non-master volume, of course, meaning that if you want it to overdrive, you literally just have to turn it up, which was exactly what I did. Both of these apps were running at full bore, which in the room was peaking out at about 132, 133 decibels, which is about comparable to a military jet taking off. So needless to say, I was wearing hearing protection. This is all done to show you the difference between an amp designed not to break up and an amp feigned for how it breaks up. As I said, this was ludicrously loud in the room, but it did sound rather special.
So is there any need for such an insane amount of power, especially in today's climate, where more often than not the sound engineer will already be having a moan about you being too loud before you've even plugged your guitar amp in? I guess ultimately the answer lies in what you're looking to achieve. Now, admittedly, a 100 watt guitar amp running at full bore is excessive for virtually any scenario, save for maybe being in free or an ACDC in the early to mid 70s. But as I said, if you're looking to use it for clean headroom, there's no reason that you should run into an issue. Recently with Cardinal Black, I've actually really been enjoying using some lower wattage guitar amps for a change, after years of using 75 watts to 100 watt guitar amp on stage. My stage volume hasn't really changed if I'm honest, I guess if anything it's slightly louder and get away with being a little bit louder on stage with Cardinal Black, but for the tour that we did with Miles Kennedy in December, I played some fairly large stages on that tour and the two amps that I was using, namely a Fender Pro Reverb which was 40 watts and a Victory Copper Deluxe which which are 35 watts, were amply loud enough. It's also worth saying that I never have any guitar coming back at me through my monitor, I just can't stand the sound of it. So my benchmark is really that I have to be able to hear myself over the drummer or over whatever else is happening on stage without any backup really. Now with Cardinal Black so far, I've been heavily reliant on my Yamaha Revstars, of course equipped with P90s, and playing a few different humbucker equipped guitars. And to be honest, I've really been enjoying that slight natural sag and compression that you get when you're hitting a lower wattage valve amp, slightly with a hotter signal. I compare this to Buck and Evans, where obviously that's a Strat band, and I'm very much aiming for that kind of high headroom, chimey, clean Strat tone. Obviously headroom is the name of the game, and in that respect, I've always used a Fuchs Clean Machine, 75 watts, and a Victory Super Duchess, the V140, which is 100 watts. As I said, it's all about headroom. And on the one occasion where I have tried running a Strat into my Fender Pro Reverb, of course 40 watts, there just wasn't enough clean headroom for me able to be able to get over the drummer on stage, but without it breaking up. In short, the idea that I'm trying to get across here is that an amp's power rating exclusively relates to its volume output is a total myth. A 50 watt amp is just as loud as a 100 watt valve amp, and thanks to the way in which our ears perceive sound, a 20 watt amp can sound nearly as loud as a 100 watt amp. The difference is of course headroom, which depending on what kind of sound that you're chasing, may be exactly what you're after, or conversely, may be exactly what you're looking to avoid, but either way, it's definitely worth having at least a cursory understanding of what type of sound you're looking to achieve, and thus informing how best to go about achieving it. I'm going to play you out now with a fun little phone clip of another notoriously loud amp, a Fender Twin, absolutely dimed. But as ever, I'm Chris Buck, you're watching Friday Fretworks. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell icon if you haven't already, and I shall see you next week for another episode. Cheers guys, take care, I'll see you soon.